Hello, welcome to the course PH6B13 e Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by K. Shankar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 3, Computational Approach in Physics. Many of the important forces in physics are inverse square forces, meaning they follow an inverse square law where the force is proportional to 1 over r square. For example, if you take the gravitational force between two objects m1 and m2, the force is given by g into m1 m2 by r square. So, you have an 1 over r square dependence. Similarly, if you consider the, the electrostatic force between two charges q1 q2 it's given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square same way if you consider the magnetostatic force of a current carrying element that also has a 1 over r square dependence so these kind of forces are known as inverse square forces so let's uh, in today's class try to analyze uh, the motion under an attractive inverse square force as a sample study, we are going to take the case of a motion of a satellite under the gravitational force. We know, as I said, the gravitational force is given by f of r equal to g capital M small m by r square r cap, where capital M is the mass of the planet. For example, if you consider Earth and motion of satellite around Earth, and capital M is the mass of Earth, small m is the mass of the satellite, and R is the separation distance between them. And R cap is the, the unit vector. So, uh, and the direction of the vector will always be towards a heavier mass, since mass of Earth is much higher than the mass of satellite, R cap will be directed towards Earth. So if this is the, the gravitational force, corresponding acceleration is given by dividing force with mass. So you get G into capital M by R square R cap. Now, if you would ask, if, uh, I think you had already studied in classical mechanics that gravitational force comes under a special category of forces known as central forces. So what are the characteristics of central forces? Uh, first thing, their magnitude depends mainly on the separation distance and their direction is either towards the center or away from the center. So in this case, if you, if you fix your coordinate system on Earth, then the direction is towards Earth or towards the center. So such so forces are known as central forces. And in the case of motion in a central force field, by default, angular momentum is conserved. As a consequence, motion is confined to a single plane. Now for ease of analysis, let's assume that the motion of the satellite around Earth is confined to the xy plane. So the axis of rotation is the z-axis. So since you have a two-dimensional motion, uh, acceleration, velocity, position, etc. can be split into two components, x component and y component. This is similar to the two, 2D motion which we have discussed in the previous classes. Okay. Now, along the x direction, what are, what are the acceleration, velocity and position? So, we know the general, general equation for acceleration. So, in the x direction, acceleration is given by gm by r square multiplied by, you have an r cap vector, this is a unit vector. So usually how do you get the unit vector? You divide a vector with the corresponding magnitude, that's how you get the unit vector. So since you are talking only about the x axis, you need to take only the x component, divide it with the magnitude of the vector which is r then you get the unit vector. So Ax is given by gm by r square into x by r or gm x by r cube. But if you look at the orbit of the satellite, it's, it's more like a, a circle, a slightly deformed circle. In any case, you know the general equation for a circle x square plus y square equal to r square. So instead of r cube, we can write x square plus y square to the power 3 by 2. So this is the acceleration once you get acceleration <coughs> you can calculate velocity and position using the Euler's formula so vxi plus 1 is given by vxi plus h into axi which is a step size 
and x i plus one equal to x i plus h into v x. Same way in the y direction, a y equal to g m by r square into the y component divided by magnitude. So this is g m y by r cube or g m y by x square plus y square to the power three by two. And following the Euler's method, v i plus one is given by v i i into h into a y i and y i plus one equal to y i plus h into b y. So you will divide your entire range into small sub-intervals and in each interval you calculate the parameters using the values from the previous sub-interval. And one thing you have to uh, note is that uh, when you choose the, the x and y coordinates always make sure that x square plus y square is greater than capital R square where R is the radius of earth. Why? Because satellite is rotating around earth so the extent of the orbit should be greater than the extent of the perimeter of the earth so average value of earth's radius is given by 6400 kilometer so when you input the x and y coordinate the initial values of x and y coordinates you have to make sure that this condition is satisfied also in the expression for acceleration g and m are constant values g is given by 6.673 into 10 to the minus 11 meter cube per kilogram per second square and mass of earth is 5.974 into 10 to the power 24 kilogram so the value of gm can be taken as 3.99 into 10 to the power 14 meter cube per second square so this should have been gm sorry for the typo let me correct it so now let's do a simple problem a satellite is dropped with in an initial velocity x velocity of 7.97 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second and y velocity of 6.972 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second in earth's orbit uh, coordinates 6 into 10 to the power 6 meter comma 8 into 10 to the power 6 meters with respect to the earth trace out the position at every minute for the next three minutes so the total time interval is three minutes which in si unit is 180 seconds and time step is one minute or 60 seconds Initial x coordinate is 6 into 10 to the power 6 meters. Initial y coordinate is 8 into 10 to the power 6 meters. Initial x velocity vx is 7.97 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second. Initial vy is 6.972 into 10 to the power 3. And we know what are the equations for ax, vx, and x. Similarly, ay, vy, and y. So first thing at time t equal to zero. So basically all the parameters have the initial values. So value of x is directly given, value of y is directly given, vx is given, vy is given. We need to calculate ax and ay. Okay, so we know the expression for ax. So this is the value of gm and x is this much divided by x square plus y square divided by three by two. So you got 3.394 similarly when you substitute the values you get a y equal to 3.192 meter per second square so these are the initial values for the first interval. next at time t equal to zero so ax is given by gm into x divided by x square plus y square to the power 3 by 2 remember always you have to take values from the previous interval so x and y have the at the same value as at time t equal to zero so when you substitute you get the same values for ax a y so x and a y doesn't change then vx equal to vx zero plus step size into ax zero so you get 8.114 into 10 to over 3 meter per second and vy equal to vy is 0 which is 6.97 into 10 to the power 3 plus step size into ay is 0 which is 3.192 so you get 7.162 into 10 to the power 3. 
Similarly, value of x equal to x0, which is 6.10 to the 6, plus step size into vx0, or vx in the previous sub-interval, which is 7.9 into 10 to the power 3. So, there is a small mistake in the book. So, instead of taking value from the previous interval, in the book, value from the same interval is considered. So, that's not correct. So, according to the methodology, you have to always take parameters from the previous interval. So, this is 7.97 into 10 to the power 3. So, you get 6.478 into 10 to the power 6 meters. Similarly, y equal to y of 0, which is 8 into 10 to the power 6 plus step size into value of vy in the previous sub interval which is 6.97 into 10 to the power 3 so here also in the book instead of taking vy from the previous interval the value in the same interval is considered so you have to make that change so you get 8.418 into 10 to the power 6 meters so that's for time equal to t equal to 60 then you have to Calculate all the parameters for the next two sub-intervals, time t equal to 120 seconds and t equal to 180 seconds. You can do these two as a homework. Okay. So if you if you look at the values here, you can see that from time t equal to 0 to time t equal to 6, 60 or in one sub-interval of one minute duration you can see that the values of the coordinates velocity acceleration everything remain the same but in reality at at each second or at each sub second the the coordinates will be changing right so if you uh, decrease your step size or if you increase the number of iteration then you are going to get a much better approximated solution or a solution which is much, much more closer to the exact solution so when you do it manually using paper and pen you can choose uh, bigger uh, step sizes but when you are performing this kind of a computation using uh, Python programming then you can choose a very small step size so that you can improve the accuracy of your results. Finally, how to implement this in Python platform? This is very similar to the two-dimensional program we have done in the previous classes. So first, uh, since you are going to use some mathematical functions, so let's import all the functions from the math module. Then the initial values of the velo x and y velocities you can input together using the split function. Then you need to import and x and y coordinates, but you have to make sure that the, the condition is satisfied. Okay. So for that, I invoke a while loop, which is always true. So while one, while one is something which is always true. Okay. Then you input x and y using the split function. Then you, you check the condition. If x square plus y square greater than 6.4 into 10 to the power 6. If it is true, then you break from this infinite loop. If not, you print the entire coordinates are not matching. Try another coordinate. So you enter another set. Then the conditional check is done. Only if the conditional check is true, then you come out of the loop. Otherwise, you keep repeating this iteration. So that's the idea behind invoking Why? this kind of an infinite loop. The then you can import the, the time and step size using split function at once. And we know that value of g into m is 3.99 into 10 to the power 14. Then gm divided by x square plus y square to the power 3 by 2 you call it as a constant k so now you can write ax equal to k into x and ay equal to k into y initial time is 0 and all the initial values are already available so let's print them straight away so the titles are print time time x velocity y velocity x position y position and you print the, the first set of values or the initial values. So you are done with the first sub interval. Now you need to move to the second sub interval for that you increment time by step size. 
Now, to perform the computation in an iteration, you invoke a while loop with the condition t less than or equal to tf. And inside the while loop, first you calculate k, then the accelerations are calculated, ax equal to k into x, ay equal to k into y. Then, using Euler's formula, you calculate the positions and velocities, x equal to x plus vx into h, y equal to y plus vy into h, and vx equal to vx plus ax into h, vy equal to vy plus ay into h. Once you calculate the parameters, you print them. Then you go to the next sub-interval by incrementing the, 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 time, the time axis. So you keep doing that. Once you come to the end of the intervals, you come out of this loop, then you print n. So with that, we come to the end of this class. And this also marks the end of module 3 and also this course. Thanks for being with me. Good night.